Morning, welcome back to the Bearded Honey Badger. So, our handle for our plum hatchet, plum carpenter's hatchet, has uh, dried. Pretty happy with the way the stain looks. So, uh, pop it out of the vise there. Have a look. So, like I mentioned uh, on the last video, I've uh, modified the handle, I took a straight uh, ball peen hammer handle, contoured it down so it fits in the hand better. And uh, we took off about three and a half inches, just to make it a little bit more manageable in length. So now I think we're ready to uh, hang this axe. So let's just check and make sure it profiles the right way. I'm gonna stick that on there. Gonna... Oh, there we go. Let's try that one more time. Sure, it's sitting square. There we go. Now you'll notice that it's sitting quite proud. So I've got my wedge. So I want to stick that wedge and I want it to settle down quite a ways. So we've got a little bit of extra axe head sticking up there. So what we're going to do is I'm going to mark where I need to cut off the difference. It's right about where the stain runs out, oddly enough. So, let's grab a saw. I'll pop this off again for a second. Get it out of the way. And, uh, I'll just cut this off here. cooperative. So I'm just going to toss it here in the vise for a second. Wrap this towel wrapped around it. Just so we don't mar the finish of the handle. And we'll just cut this off. Unscathed handle, the length you need. Check the orientation again. And set that back on there. There we go. Sitting perfectly on there now. I'm really quite happy with the way that sits. It's going to be a nice little carpenter's hatchet. Hi there. Welcome back to the Bearded Honey Badger. So, when I guys left you last, we had uh, just seated this head on this uh, handle. It's almost dry. We're going to cut that off in a minute and finish it. While I was waiting, I uh, went and pulled my True Temper Black Prince by Welland Vale double bitted three pound felling axe out of the uh, vinegar and uh, brushed it off and uh, you can see there it came out pretty nicely you can see clearly there it states will and veil on the other side a little harder to see let's see if I get this the right way around oh, that's my focus for you it says true temper black prints so this is their premier felling axe. 
Mason and, and yeah, Premier Axe and Fury uh, General. So uh, I scrubbed off all the rust. I have a lot of pitting left on one side. I'm gonna have to brush brush that up with the wire wheel, but um, that's gonna be our next project, I think, after this one's done. For the small uh, modified hatchet, we'll see which one comes first. But uh, we'll put that out of the way for now. I'll get these gloves off. Okay, so we're back. This looks like it's set up. It's pretty solid. So we're just going to take a saw and we're just going to trim that right off there, okay? So I'm going to head over here. Got my first little hand saw. Now what we can do is we can place this up here in a vise. Nice and snug. I'm going to grab a saw. And we're just going to follow the uh, contour of the hack head. All the way down. Too far away, we don't want it falling on the ground. So, for the fact that this is a fairly old axe, and there's a little bit of deformation in the uh, headpiece, I had to do some work on the eye, I ended up with some gaps. Now, I'm not happy with that, it's not perfect, it's uh, a little off round but you can see how the actual axe head itself is not square either so this axe is seeing a lot of use and a little bit of wear so what we're going to do to fix that and you guys are all going to probably roll over in your graves because you're like oh no you're covering up that nice edge Now that's not going to ever come out of there, but what we're going to do is we're going to true it up a little bit. So we're going to take this for an egg and uh, wrap it around the handle so I can get it to cooperate with the frame. Let's stand this back up in here. Snug that down. Show you a little trick. I'm going to use these gloves I used for the uh, Bell and Bale axe. They're kind of covered in uh, oil now. But I think the axe head's pretty solid. So I got some uh, brown food coloring here. And I've got some uh, 500 epoxy. So, I'm going to do a little experiment here. We're going to take some epoxy and we're going to put it down on the counter. Take some of this brown food coloring. how this is going to actually turn out. But I'm going to take the food coloring 
and mix up my epoxy with it. And you always hear what they say, mix it, and you think it's mixed enough, and just keep mixing it. Especially now that we're adding a third element in here, a little bit of food coloring. My beautiful wife Carrie doesn't know I'm using her food coloring, but I'm sure she'll understand. It's just a drop of it, sealing it back up, putting it back in the kitchen. So we're going to take this, and we're going to put that right in the gaps. Make sure we get it right down in there because we want this to bond nicely. Once this starts to set up, it's going to fill in these holes. It's going to act. Oh, that's one head there. Mm. Yeah, act as a, do a seal for that. Now I have some options here. I've got some uh, picks of scrap kicking around. I've got some paper towel. I'm just going to grab a piece of paper towel. And I'm going to wipe that off the head. And it's gonna Yeah, it's still not as much in that hole as I'd like it to be. So the trick here is to get it all in the crack. We're going to fill up that gap so there's no chance for that to wiggle loose later on in this hatchet's life. So, I'm going to leave it like that for now. I'm going to try and clean up the edges a bit. Still not filling in there. You have to bear with me. This is my first time doing this. I've only seen it done on YouTube, so if you have better ideas, let me know, please. hardens a bit. Maybe this will be a little easier to fill in the gaps. I think what I'll do is I'll just kind of make it proud there. Now it's all filled in, but I'm going to wipe it pulled away from the opening. I'm going to leave that sit there for a little bit. All right, and I'll let it uh, set up a bit. So, now this will be able to sand off the metal. So I'll just wait till that sets, and we'll sand it off the metal, and then we're going to be done. Now again, this step's not required. The minimal gaps that we had there are not going to be enough to ever unseat this head, but uh, 
I just want to make sure there's not going to be any water getting in there or anything else that could heave it to the side or got frozen or uh, over time. We don't want the wood to rot. Now I'm going to put, a, like I said, I'm going to put a coat of tried and true true oil. It's actually a Danish uh, finishing oil. And I like it a little bit better than just a pure linseed oil. Um, like I said, it polymerizes faster. Hi, welcome back to the Bearded Honey Badger. So last time I left you off for, with a quick stop, uh, we let the epoxy set in the top of the head just to give a smooth finish and fill in the gaps. I've uh, Since it dried, I've filed off the rough epoxy edge, so we've got it all uh, smoothed down there. And I've put its first coat of Danish oil on the handle. And uh, it turned out very well, actually better than I expected it to. So uh, for all intents and purposes, our uh, plum, 1917-1919 Carpenter's Hatchet is done. So, thanks for joining me and if you have any comments or questions please leave them in the comments below and if you uh, like this video and want to see more please give me a like and subscribe because there will be more to come. Not just here in the workshop but out in the range and in the woods. So thank you again. Talk to you later.